Here is a quick video tutorial demonstrating how to use my HDR tone mapping macros for Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo has HDR merging and tone mapping built in, but the tone mapping functionality is achieved through the tone mapping persona and is a destructive operation. The tone mapping itself is also very effective at tone compression, but is more of a brute force approach. You may prefer to take a less aggressive approach that requires more manual retouching afterwards, which is where my macros come in. Let's quickly go over installation of the macros. The easiest way to install them is to drag drop the AF macros file into Affinity Photo and let go of the mouse button over the interface. The macro library panel will open automatically with the macros populated in the list view. You can also open the library panel manually by going to View, Studio, and Library. Then you could import the macros using Import Macros on the panel options here. These tone mapping macros are designed for use with 32 bit unbounded HDR documents. If you are unfamiliar with what that means, it is essentially what is created whenever you use File and New HDR Merge to take several bracketed exposures and merge them together into an image with expanded dynamic range. We'll create our first example using bracketed exposures. So I'll add them here into the images list. Then I also want to uncheck noise reduction since no additional denoising is required. And crucially, I will also uncheck tone map HDR image. This saves us time when the HDR merge process completes because by default, it will immediately move to the tone mapping persona and we would then have to cancel that operation. By unchecking this option, we skip this step and can instead go straight to applying the tone mapping macros. Now we have the clone brush tool selected by default in case we want to retouch any areas that have ghosting. We don't need to do this, so let's use H to select the view tool and that will hide the sources panel. And also I'll move across to the layers panel so we can see our layer structure. And I'll also increase the thumbnail size for the benefit of this video. Now, when dealing with HDR imagery, you will often end up with brightness values outside the range that can be mapped and shown on a traditional display. This is why we use tone mapping to bring those values back to within a displayable range. Within the HDR tone mapping macro category, we have these three tone mapping options and some presets that we can apply as well. We will start with logarithmic tone mapping. I'll just single click to apply it, and this will instantly make our previously out of range tones visible, as you can see here. We can then retouch further using manual approaches, such as adding a curves adjustment, which is Command M on Mac or Control M on Windows. And I'll just quickly click drag and add some nodes to the curves graph here, just to bring in a bit more contrast into the image. And also, even a straightforward brightness and contrast adjustment can be really powerful here. Now, if you wanted to use a white balance adjustment, I would recommend placing this underneath the tone mapping group. So it is affecting the original linear data rather than the tone mapped data you will find this is more effective and produces a better result. One of the main advantages of these macros is the non-destructive behavior. At any point, I can shift click and select all of these layers, then hide them. So I can avoid ever having to alter the original image data. If I just delete these layers, there are also a small handful of presets I can experiment with as well. For example, the log and tone curve preset is designed to provide a starting point for the logarithmic tone mapping rather than having to add your own tone curve. If I just undo this operation, I can also try the black and white preset, which will perform a weighted grayscale intensity conversion for a balanced monochrome image. It also adds some structural enhancement to bring out detail and texture, but you can hide this if you don't want that effect. We will look at the other presets as we move through some further workflow examples. Okay, 
So looking at another example here. Once we apply the macro, the image becomes quite washed out, but the initial exposure level after HDR merging is also perhaps too bright. We can expand the group here and double click on base exposure, then lower or raise this as required. As before, I can add further adjustment layers above the tone mapping group or layer to shape the tones further. So I might add my curves adjustment, and then I also might add an HSL adjustment. So that is Command U on Mac or Control U on Windows. And I might just increase the saturation of the reds here and also the yellows with perhaps a little bit of a hue shift as well. And don't forget that I can still go into my base exposure layer and experiment with this whilst everything is still rendering above in the layer stack non-destructively. For this particular image, I could delete the existing layers, then try the sunset preset, which is designed to bring back contrast without crushing the darker tones too much, and also make the yellow and red sunset tones more prominent. Moving on to another example, Alongside the logarithmic tone mapping macro, there are also tone compression and highlight compression macros. These apply a single live filter layer and are much faster to render. They are more rudimentary, but you are of course welcome to experiment and see which macro result you prefer. With the tone compression macro, you can double click the tone compression layer and experiment with the relationship between the gamma slider and the tone compression scale. So as I bring tone compression scale higher, like so, I can then manipulate gamma accordingly. Now I could delete this and add the highlight compression macro instead. This is very similar, but if I just double click into the highlight compression layer, it allows you to control the compression of the highlight tones separately to all the other tones in the image. And of course, you can use the gamma slider again to find the right balance of tones for your image. Now, Affinity Photo also allows you to develop single raw files to 32-bit unbounded HDR. And we can, of course, use the tone mapping macros for this workflow as well. Now, to set this up for single raw files, we can go to the assistant options up here, click through to develop assistant, then set the raw output format option here to 32-bit HDR. You will notice it changes the tone curve option to take no action. Make sure you leave this set to take no action as this will ensure that any out of bound pixel values are not clamped. Now we can load our raw file. It is deliberately underexposed to try and retain some of the incredibly bright detail in the artificially lit areas here. Let's push the exposure up until we get a suitable brightness level for the foreground. Don't worry about these clipped areas. Because we are developing in 32-bit unbounded, these values cannot currently be seen, but they are still available. We will click develop and move to the photo persona. Okay, so now we can apply logarithmic tone mapping and that will bring those values back into the displayable range. Once again, we can retouch our image further. I will use curves again, just to add a bit more contrast into the scene, like so. And also perhaps I'll add a brightness and contrast adjustment just to push those tones around a bit further. The tone mapping macros also work really well for 3D renders. Although the majority of 3D rendering applications allow you to save tone mapped gamma corrected renders 
they will often let you save OpenEXR or Radiance HDR documents as well. These formats will contain linear scene referred values that have not been gamma corrected and tone mapped. So you can instead perform tone mapping in your post-production software, such as Affinity Photo. So here I have just opened an EXR document saved from Blender with unclamped color values. Ordinarily, I would select the RGB layer, then enter the tone mapping persona. But instead, I can apply the tone compression macro here. And like I did with the previous examples, I can use additional layer work to shape the tones how I wish. I may also use a selective color adjustment to manipulate the colors slightly. But again, this whole process is completely non-destructive. So I get to retain the original linear image information at all times. If I want to experiment with the presets, I can delete the existing layers here, then try the 3D render preset. This provides a more neutral look with some subtle color enhancement. If I undo, then try the ArchViz preset, this goes further, adding structural enhancement and increasing color vibrancy. In general, you will find the presets are very restrained as they are designed to give you a starting point and ideas for further retouching. Finally, a huge advantage of these macros is that you can use them to tone map HDR 360 imagery. Since they are spatially invariant, and do not produce seam artifacts. Affinity Photo's tone mapping persona is unfortunately not seam aware, so it will produce distinct seam edges where the left and right sides meet once the image is projected. Now I have a 360 3D render here, but the same principle applies if you have an HDR 360 image stitched from photographic imagery. I can apply my tone mapping macro, I'll use the ArchViz preset here, then I'll select the initial image layer, and I will enter live equirectangular projection. And as I move around, notice how there are no seam artifacts at all. Whilst in this projected view, if I wanted to bring back a bit more detail outside the windows, I could add an additional live shadows and highlights filter layer to the RGB layer in this case then just bring the highlights slider down, like so. Then I can just select the RGB layer again, use V to get to the Move tool, and re-enter Live Projection on the Context toolbar. And again, this is all completely non-destructive, so you can always hide these layers to get back to our initial linear information. You could show them again and go in and change the parameters at any time. So there we go. That was a quick video on how to use my HDR tone mapping macros. I hope you found it useful and thank you for watching.